the way you win a lion and the award-winning campaigns like honestly come from what is that kernel of truth or insight or different thing or purpose that you want to have as part of the campaign that is the core thing you build the strategy around. Hi, I'm Jenny Quickie jones the founder and CEO of Digital Voices, and this is all about CAN this year. So this year was only our second year at Cannes, and last year I went and felt just very outside of the advertising industry. And I think I always thought, because I came from YouTube and tech, rather than from the ad industry, that I didn't have a space in it. And I would say this year was really different, and I found it much more welcoming and inclusive and inspiring, because finally Digital Voices was a little bit more known in the industry. And I met people who like wanted us to succeed because we represent I think often a diverse perspective in the industry or um, kind of a self-made female-led perspective in the industry that you don't normally see. It's really rare in the US, less than 1% of agencies are founded by women. So finally this year, there were people who were like true advocates for digital voices and who I could kind of lean on as mentors and who have inspired me in the industry for years. And it finally felt like having a place so of course, like the programming was really inspiring. There was a lot about the gen about the creator economy. There was a lot about Gen AI. But the thing I found personally the most rewarding about Cannes this year was that it felt finally like you belonged in the industry. We've worked in this industry, like a digital voices, like people on the team worked in this industry for over a decade. So for us, the creator economy and influence marketing seems so second nature. But um, I think the rise of it is finally being understood by brands. Goldman Sachs did some research that said the creator economy is worth $250 billion today, which again is a massive scale from five years ago, but that within the next five years, it will be worth nearly $500 billion, which is an insane number to think about. So I think the advertising industry is really only beginning to wake up to that. And a lot of brands are still in the nascency of the way they do influence marketing. Um, so this year, Can actually had a creator track that they worked with creator economy experts to develop. So there, were, there was programming and there were specific tickets for creators. A lot of influencers flew from the US as well. And brands bought influencers, platforms bought influencers, agencies bought influencers. So it was really interesting to hear their perspective on stage. Um, there were also a lot of like creator economy thought leaders there. So like. Brendan Graham, Jamie Gutfriend, all of whom have been talking about the power of the creator economy and often going to events like VidCon or staying in California for a long time. But this year, VidCon and Cannes did not clash, so you could go to both. So there was a whole cohort of people who flew literally from California to Cannes back to go to VidCon and they are now like exhausted and entirely conferenced out. But they had never seen this side of the advertising industry. So not only were they on stages speaking about the potential of cre the creator economy, but I think they were also seeing how marketers think and how campaigns get designed for the first time. Because it used to be that influencers would get tagged on at the last minute. It's like, oh, we've got another $100,000. Let's do something with influencers and let's give them a brief. Let's have them fit into the existing creative campaign. But I think the people there from the creator economy were really challenging brands to think about how you're getting creators involved from the beginning of an ideation point of a campaign. So it was, I think, a really big mutual education moment. Um, and I think a lot of the creators were kind of shocked by the extravagance of Cannes. Um, imagine you're a creator and a brand's like, sorry, we can't pay you more than $2,000. And then you see like Gary V's yacht and the Mediacom yacht an endless rosé. You're like, hang on. So I think a lot of the creators were shocked by that. Um, and I'm hoping it will make them pitch bigger ideas and brands more likely to sign off those big concepts now. It's really interesting because you go to Cannes every year and it's like, what inspires you? And there are great sessions and a lot of people just go for the parties and it's like, yeah, cool. Tyler performed at Spotify. That's amazing. It's great. But the thing that I take away from Cannes is the work. Like, the number of sessions and pieces of work that relied upon purpose at their core. And it shaped the way I want us to think about the campaigns we work on with clients. I want us to start pulling out a key purpose insight for those really brave clients. So Dove did an incredible session at the Female Quotient with Dr. Rebecca Swift from Getty Images, with creators, 
all about inclusion in campaigns and how you think about representation. That type of thinking is how I want us to be doing strategy for influence campaigns. And I think the way you win a lion and the award winning campaigns like honestly come from what is that kernel of truth or insight or different thing or purpose that you want to have as part of a campaign that is the core thing you build the strategy around. Whereas I think again, influencers are often just activated like media channels, like how many people can we reach and who are they? So it really always inspires me to pull out purpose first when thinking about designing campaigns. Um, yeah, I mean, the Dove Turn Your Back campaign did really well. Our client's daughter Ash won a Titanium Grand Prix for all the ads. And that is because they literally took every Super Bowl ad and included an option to win every single item sold in the Super Bowl ads through the DoorDash campaign, which is just a way of thinking about advertising that no one's ever done before. So I think to me, I'm really inspired by seeing how people think differently. Everyone talked about Gen AI and Gen AI is super important. Like we do a lot of AI campaigns with Adobe showcasing their capabilities. But I would say that Gen AI is going to very quickly become a standard practice in all campaign execution. So it shouldn't be about what's the AI idea you're gonna do. Very quickly, that is gonna get old. It should be like, how are you integrating AI into your everyday ways of working? So the Candlelion Festival has been working for the last few years on making it a more inclusive event. They've got a lot of events like Black at Can, See It, Be It, which is a great initiative for showcasing young creatives. Brixton Finishing School are present, who are all about getting people from different classes and backgrounds access to advertising. So there have been a lot of programs that have had a presence before, but I think they really stepped up this year. And the other thing I think organizers tried to do was really work with facilitators across the industry to talk about times can has not felt safe and how to fix it. So there were like discussions on reporting sexual harassment at CAN, which last year when there were instances of that, like there was no discussion on how to report it. Um, and I wanna be honest, like things still happen. Like someone I spoke to was offered investment in their company in exchange for sex at Gutter Bar late, in, late at night. Like this stuff happens, but I think there's a much more vocal pushback against it when it does. There are mechanisms for reporting when things go wrong at CAN. Um, and there are like real champions for inclusion who are super senior in the industry now and who will not tolerate that crap, which has been really exciting. Um, so yeah, I had a conversation with um, Sophie Neary from, from Google all about how she's trying to cultivate spaces to empower women through who she invites to events, through who she works with. So they were doing some brilliant work with Brixton Finishing School. Um, again, See It Be It has been going on for a long time, but they really, again, were stepping up the mentorship opportunities, access to senior people, safe spaces. So that to me was really inspiring because the clients we work with and want to champion and campaigns we want to champion all have to come from a place of inclusion. We want to run campaigns that make people feel seen from different communities. And that relies on having a diverse perspective on your team. It relies on clients having a diverse perspective and thinking differently. So a lot of our clients are really championing inclusion. So it was really great to meet them at Cannes and to see that those principles that exist in our campaigns actually also exist in those people. And they think about the agencies they want to champion. They think about the voices they want to champion. So seeing that at Cannes and having these moments to discuss how you want to make this industry feel better and feel safer and feel more accessible for people really shifted my perspective because like again what I actually want is to build amazing campaigns that change perceptions and to drive full funnel results for clients and I think we've got clients that kind of believe that as well so they're coming to Cannes for something different. Last year Cannes a little bit talked about sober can a lot more that was you know there were more sports activations there were more run clubs but this year it was like very much focused on how you create an inclusive space and I was really proud to see that change. So last year was my first year at Cannes and I found it quite overwhelming. You have to really quickly get comfortable with like a sense of FOMO. You know, getting access to spaces is really difficult and then there'll always be something you're missing. And I think I found that quite overwhelming, um, especially as a founder where you feel like you're going with a business objective. So this year when we ran our first ever Cannes event activations, 
the thinking behind it was like, how do you create intimate and calmer spaces to have real conversation? Because can shouldn't just be about drinking a lot on a fancy yacht, it should be about connection. Um, and we have clients we had never met who we were meeting for the first time at Cannes. We had new clients we were speaking to at Cannes. We had people around the industry we we're building relationships with. Um, and then obviously there were lots of creators as well. So we had all these aims, but the thing that pulled them together was we need to have a real space for conversation. So we um, ran an activation called Escape, which was at Little Black Beach. And in the morning it had smoothies and massage chairs and in the afternoon it had froze. But it was very much like just a very calm space where you could go and escape the madness of Cannes. And then we did a, a dinner that actually was probably my favorite. I don't know, the helicopter was good, but also the dinner really surpassed all my expectations. Like we had about 12 people come to um, a very intimate dinner in Antibes. And we went round the, round the table to introduce everyone and said, you know, what's your name? What, what are you excited about at Cannes? What do you do? But also what's your proudest achievement of the last year? And people opened up so personally. So they had like career things they were proud of, but also someone was talking about how they taught their four-year-old to shoot hoops. It was a really personal, intimate space and it meant you really got to know and respect people you work with. I mean, I cried during that dinner. I also cried during the helicopter lunch where people were really personal as well. So we took people on a helicopter to a vineyard and did um, a wine tasting lunch, which again was like super intimate. You have to have a real congruence in the things you want to build and the impact you want to have to do great work. And to me, that the intimate spaces that underlined all of our, all of our events brought out that potential to find out what purpose is and what do people really want from their careers and what really makes them proud. Um, so to me, I was so comfortable with FOMO this year because I knew that everything we did was intentional. And so every conversation that I had, yeah, of course there's an opportunity cost, you've missed something else. But the conversations we had, we could be really present for and that was such a beautiful part of camp.